Okay, so it's been a year since I looked at Ubuntu Budgie, and the last time I looked was 19.10.1, uh, and quite a lot has changed since then. So RPI Emulation Gaming uh, let me know about this, that this new version was out. Apparently it's still in beta, uh, it doesn't really feel like it, because it feels like a really complete operating system. But uh, let's have a look at uh, the starting screen that you get. So I've just newly installed this on an SSD drive, and uh, you can see that it comes up with this sort of welcome screen. So browser ballot, so you can choose what browser you want. So we've got all sorts in here, like Midori, Gnome Web, Ephemeral. Uh, I'm gonna put Chromium on there as well. You can see Firefox comes pre-installed. And while it's doing that, let's go back to this previous screen. So customization. So we've got budgie desktop settings and ordinary settings. So what do the desktop settings look like? Yeah, really. So a lot of the Ubuntu operating systems have a really nice polish and a really nice feel to them. And uh, Wimpy did loads of work on Ubuntu Mate and made that really a very good operating system for the Pi. And uh, hopefully this builds on that. So style widgets, icons, cursors. So let's have a look at icons. Oh, it doesn't show me an image of them, so I'll leave them as they are. So desktop. Allow icons on the desktop, show all active mounts. I quite like seeing active mounts, so that's your hard drives or USB sticks or anything you've got plugged in. Home directory, I probably would have that on the desktop as well. And a trash can. You can see fonts here. Raven, which looks like a calendar. Crikey, there's, there's loads and loads of optimization here. And then ordinary settings. So you can see my Wi-Fi shows up there. Uh, I'm connected to Ethernet at the moment. So wired connected, 1000 megabits a second, VPN options, Bluetooth, it picks up my Bluetooth speaker. Background, it's so simple to understand. Everything is very, very logical. And uh, I don't think anybody would struggle with this as an operating system. Notifications, nice to have the options on that. Control which search results are shown in the activities overview. The order of search results can also be changed by moving rows in the list. That's quite impressive. Applications. So if I was to click on something, say document viewer. Yeah, so you get various different options here. Files, Firefox, yeah, everything very, very easy. Yeah, very logical. So I've just had a notification up here as well, and you can see that's green as well. So if I click on that, one unread notification, budgie welcome. Completed installation of Chromium Snap. So let's go back, keyboard shortcuts. Loads and loads of shortcuts left. Updates and extras, software update. Uh, the base distribution of Ubuntu Budgie strives to make all of the most important software available to its users automatically. However, patent and copyright restrictions, see Ubuntu license policy, complicate distribution of software to support non-free formats. However, you can install the ability to play popular non-free media formats, including DVD, MP3, QuickTime and Windows media formats by following the instructions below. Let's go with that. Drivers, language and input, optional tasks, system specifications, Ubuntu Hirsute Hippo, Development branch, you can see I'm not overclocked at the moment and it supports 64-bit. 8 gig of RAM is the one I'm using at the moment and it's connected and it shows disk capacity on this 60 gig SSD drive. Yeah, really, really nice that. Really nice welcome screen. So I'm, I'm running at 1920 by 1080. I often go down to 720 just to improve performance. I saw this, uh, there's a PDF. When you, in, when you download this, there's a PDF and I haven't gone through it all the way yet, but I did see that it has an overclock option. So I can just do that at two gigahertz. And the temperature comes up here as well. Look. And I also saw the XRDP. So I use uh, the Microsoft Remote Desktop and uh, so it looks like I can just enable that just by clicking on it, pop my password in. And we've got display, so various different modes on here, GPU memory options on here. It's very much tailored to the Pi, which wasn't there a long time ago on Ubuntu, so it's really nice to see. I remember Wimpy talking about adding this sort of features to it, and, uh, and here they are. So up the top here, we've got different desktop screens. We've got quick note. We've got quick options to our folders. So say for instance, I wanna go straight to my documents folder. That'll open straight from there. Then we saw the notification before and we can just clear those out. 
There's my uh, network connections. Audio, now I'm gonna change this to the three and a half mil jack, uh, just because I'm capturing and uh, that'll be a better way of doing it. Front, left. I'm using a mono speaker, so that's not gonna make Front, any difference, but it's left. nice to have that test option there. Look at this, balance power, power saver, blank screen, Wi-Fi can be turned off to save power. Talks about my keyboard there as well. I guess that's battery, is it? Either battery or signal. I'm guessing if I had an extra display, I'd be able to see more on that. Mouse and touchpad. Yeah, just very customizable, but also incredibly logical. Really, really nicely laid out. And uh, all your power options are up here as well. So let's have a look at this side of it. So you can see I've added these to the desktop. They weren't there by default. Uh, in fact, down the bottom here, we've got software. So this is the software store, rhythm box, LibreOffice Writer, LibreOffice Calc, Files, and then Firefox. And we should find Chromium in here in a minute. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is restart and uh, apply that overclock. So after restarting, you can see it comes up with the budgie arm tweak tool because start on login is checked. So if you don't want that to keep popping up, then obviously you can uncheck that, but I'm happy with it at the moment. So if I click on overclock, uh, you can see here current speed is 2 gigahertz. Uh, remote, XRDP is installed, XRDP service is OK. Now it mentions in the PDF that you can download uh, that KMS is the mode they recommend. Uh, so I'm going to click on that and update the video mode. I don't know if that will need a restart. Changes take effect on reboot. OK, I'm rebooting again. And the reboot is always nice and fast, which is great. So let's have a look at some of the apps up here. Uh, so you can see I've got a search bar, which I really like to have a search bar for all my apps. Uh, and I've got a couple of different ways I can show this. Uh, so if I was to start typing, uh, say for instance, Firefox, uh, you can see it comes up and also same with Chromium. Uh, so really nice uh, catfish file searches there you can see as well. Let's just flick through the apps. It's probably easiest to do it on this, maybe with the keyboard. Archive manager, oh, accessories. Has it got one for everything? No, so accessories, archive manager, backups, budgie, arm and pie configuration, calculator, catfish, disk, document scanner, document viewer, files, firmware. Crikey, there's loads of them. Like Plank, which is the dock, screenshot app, text editor, uh, if I go to games, just some very basic games on there. Graphics, drawing, GThumb, image viewer, LibreOffice Draw, internet, you can see that I've installed that in Chromium. Office, the full Office suite seems to be there from LibreOffice. Uh, other, iBrush preferences, LibreOffice Math, uh, Celluloid, Cheese and Rhythm Box, System Tools, various different things on, oh, various different things on here. All your software, your up data, startup applications, system monitor, universal access and utilities. Let's go back up to the system manager, system monitor rather. There you go, processes, resources, file system. Very nice. Let's close that down. Uh, let's open Firefox and just do a quick video test. I did notice uh, Wimpy's done another update to Ubuntu Mate as well, so I need to have a look at that. Uh, that's exciting. I don't think there's been an update for quite a while. Uh, I could be wrong, but I, I usually monitor uh, my subscriptions on YouTube and have a look and see what's there. So the browser feels nice and fast. I remember I've, I've enabled this KMS driver, not the fake one. Uh, so we'll see what happens at various different resolutions. YouTube dark mode seems to be the default. The PSP video HDR, my normal test video. Oh, YouTube always does this. Uh, H. Oh, it comes up. Look. The display looks really good. I don't know why. Battery, 30%. Oh, that, that video looks good on the advert initially. So we need to have a look at the resolution. Right, it's on 480 at the moment. 
So let's go up to 1080. Just pop on stats for nerds. It will pause while I do this stats for nerds bit. And in fact, let's pause it and let's start playing it. <laughs> it doesn't look like 1080 is going to work. It is always the Achilles heel on the Pi, uh, is video performance. 720, it doesn't mind it, let's say. 10 frames dropped at 720, it seems to have settled now. Remember this, I've only literally just installed this operating system, I haven't played around with it very much at all. Yeah, that seems to be all right. Let's go back into 1080 and just see if it's, if it's caught up on itself. Dropping frames at 1080, full screen. Still dropping frames, it's playing it, but it's still dropping frames. I wonder if I change that KMS driver. I'm gonna I'm gonna try the fake one and see if that makes a difference, or where do I find it? So, uh, system tools, startup applications. Oh, what was it called? It, it was something about ARM, wasn't it? ARM and Pi configuration. See that, a search like that, which Raspberry Pi OS doesn't have, I think is just a given an operating system. They should always have it. Right, so fake KMS mode, update video mode, and then let's restart that. Okay, so pretty similar, it's still dropping the frames. Uh, I think I'm gonna try Chromium. Uh, so let's pause that, because I've installed Chromium, and also I would install H.264FI uh, to block 60 FPS, because uh, the Pi doesn't handle 108060 very well, but 108030 it usually does all right with. So let's try Chromium, first time I've started it. And we need to go to uh, more tools and extensions. Go in the Chrome Web Store and H264 FI. In fact, let's go with the enhanced version. Add to Chrome, add extension. I click on the extension, options. There we go, so block 60 FPS. You can block a various other things on here as well. Some of these are higher bitrate video modes. I'll, I guess I'll go with what it said, but I'll block the 60 FPS, let's try that. And we're on the fake KMS driver still. So still dropping frames, I'm getting a tiny bit of audio glitch as well at 1080. Uh, yeah, it's still dropping frames. Let's try that real KMS driver and see if that does it. Yeah, it's dropped itself to 720 and it's still dropping some frames. Doesn't look too bad, but um, I need to play around with that more. It'd be lovely if this just came straight out of the box working um, with video. Maybe I should have just put uh, the h 264 fi into Firefox and just dropped that down. But this is more about the operating system. We can play around with the video mode later. Uh, in fact, let's go back to Firefox and just, just do some ordinary web searching because it, it felt quite snappy. So let's do BBC and open another tab and hot UK deals. Click back to BBC. Yeah, the browser works well. Uh, as a browser, that, it, that does feel, I've often thought that um, Chromium tends to be smoother, but Firefox tend to feel a bit snappier on the Pi. But uh, obviously it depends what you do, how you tweak it and things like that. But yeah, browser wise, I'm happy with that. So let's close all that down. And uh, let's have a look at my NAS drive. Uh, I always do this to test how well it picks up network drives. So if I click on network, uh, there's my NAS drive. Uh, I can hit connect go to public, yeah, and it comes up straight away. That's brilliant, really happy with that. Uh, the printing options, um, I'm sure I saw something about printing in here. Uh, on Ubuntu, it's been working for a while and it just detects my HP printer on the network normally. And there it is, it's ready to go.
and I've tested that before in previous videos and it works brilliantly. So really happy with this. Uh, I do need to check out uh, the Wimpy's version of Ubuntu Mate as well. Um, but uh, yeah, this is a great operating system. Really works well, very, very logical, comes with loads of things. Uh, I suppose I ought to have a look at the software store. So if we go at the top again, start typing software and just click on it. So logical, it, it, everything works really well. And you can see here, it's really nicely presented. So if we wanted, uh, say for instance, whatever Vorta is, uh, we can have a look at that. You can see there, backup client for Mac OS, and you can just hit install and it will start to install. But you've got reviews, you've got all sorts of things on here. Yeah, really impressed with it. I will definitely be playing around with this a lot more. So I'll show you how to install this in a minute. Um, I was running it off this UCAN drive uh, with a CSL USB SATA adapter and it worked perfectly all the way through uh, and uh, everything was excellent. And I was using a Pi 4 8 gig. But uh, when I used this M.2 drive, which I previously had Ubuntu Mate on, and I'm gonna put the new version of Ubuntu Mate on it to give that a try, uh, it would only boot up properly with USB 2. Uh, if I plugged it into USB 3, it would just hang on startup. And I tried various different methods, but I couldn't get it to work with this drive. It could be that it's just the M.2 drive that isn't compatible with it. As I say, with the SSD, it worked absolutely fine straight away. So let's move over to Raspberry Pi OS, which is what I used to install it, and I'll show you where to get it. Okay, so it's on this page, uh, ubuntubudgie.org forward slash downloads and uh, I'll put a link in the description to it. But if you scroll down, you need to click on this tab, Ubuntu Budgie 21.04 Raspberry Pi, uh, and uh, there is a direct download link here as well. So if you click on that, it was quite a slow download for me, it took quite a while to download, but uh, once it had downloaded, if I go to my downloads folder, there you go, you can see it's here, so 1.7 gig, and I just use Raspberry Pi Imager to write it, so accessories, Imager, Choose OS, go down to the bottom and hit custom, hit shoot budgie, open, and then just pick your storage. I haven't got anything plugged in there at the moment and hit right and that's it. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.